Hey everyone, are your blood sugar levels out of control? Do you get irritable if you don't eat every couple of hours? Do you feel fatigued or sleepy in the afternoon? Maybe you get a bit dizzy if you stand up too quickly? In this episode, I'm gonna lay it all out for you in terms of how we can eat for a balanced blood sugar and why it's important. Blood sugar, otherwise known as glucose, is our body's primary fuel source. And when it's mixed with a little oxygen and a handful of vitamins and minerals, our cells can make energy and perform their many countless functions. Glucose is so important as a fuel source that we've developed developed a very sophisticated system to keep our blood sugar levels from dropping too low or rising too high for that matter. In fact, consistently high blood sugar has been linked to the top killers of today, including heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and Alzheimer's disease. We get glucose from the food we eat, mostly from carbohydrates. Our liver and muscles are big glucose consumers, so these tissues can also store a limited amount of glucose in a form known as glycogen, which can be accessed very quickly to make energy. But we don't necessarily have to eat sugar to make blood sugar. Our liver can convert stored fat into glucose. And as a last resort, we can even break down protein in our muscles and use that to make glucose if needed. Now, it has to be said that a little goes a very long way. In fact, in an average size healthy adult with about five liters of blood, we need less than a teaspoon of glucose circulating at any given time to keep the lights on. So how does our body maintain its blood sugar? Here's how it works. We get hungry, eat a little food, and our blood glucose glucose rises. But glucose in the blood doesn't do us much good. In fact, it can be quite toxic. So the idea is to get it into the cells so that it can be used as energy. And for this to occur, we need the help of a hormone called insulin, which is made by our pancreas. Insulin signals to our cells to absorb glucose. So when blood glucose rises, insulin levels rise, and our cells then take up the glucose, and our blood glucose levels fall again. When levels fall to a certain point, we get hungry, eat again, and the process repeats. And our blood sugar is never just static. It's continually ebbing and flowing, and that's normal. The problem begins when we eat in a way that creates sharp rises in our blood glucose levels, as is usually the case when we consume processed or refined grains and cereals. In other words, things made of flour, starchy carbohydrates like potatoes and pasta and rice and bread, foods high in sugar like candy and sweets and many breakfast cereals, as well as sugary drinks and even fruit juice, which can contain quite a lot of sugar, even though it might be natural sugar. The effect on blood sugar can still be dramatic. The sugars in these foods and drinks are absorbed very quickly into the blood, causing a rapid increase in our blood glucose levels, and this in turn creates a cascade of insulin production to clear the glucose from the blood. But here's the thing. Insulin is a long-acting hormone. So long after it's done its job and got blood sugar back to a normal range, it's still circulating in the bloodstream, working to shove glucose into the cells to the point where eventually it can create a low blood sugar situation. Now the brain is very dependent on a stable supply of glucose. So not surprisingly, when levels in the blood get low, it considers that to be a rather dangerous state to be in, and so the brain takes action, releasing a stress hormone known as cortisol, which among other things, increases our blood sugar levels via the liver. The brain also initiates the release of powerful hunger hormones in an effort to get us to eat food, and preferably fast. And knowing that the quickest way to get blood sugar back up is to consume carbohydrates, the result of these hunger hormones is usually carb cravings. And those cravings are hard to fend off. I just want to lie on the beach and eat hot dogs. That's all I've ever wanted. Sound familiar? You're suddenly on the hunt for a cookie or a slice of cake or a piece of chocolate or a soft drink. And when you eat that piece of cake or slice of toast or any other food with a high glycemic index, this causes blood glucose to rise sharply again and you end up on board the blood sugar roller coaster. Now, when our blood sugar levels bounce up and down erratically throughout the day, this really is not very good for us in so many ways. And it typically causes symptoms such as irritability, anxiety, fatigue, dizziness, if you stand up too quickly, poor concentration, headaches, painful or heavy periods, and weight gain particularly around the midsection. And of course, if it goes on long enough, it can lead to diabetes and obesity, or you might say, diabesity. The issue is this. With insulin, in addition to its role in regulating blood sugar, it's also responsible for fat storage, which is why it's earned the nickname the fat storage hormone. Now, don't get me wrong. Insulin is not the bad guy here. In fact, we need it to survive. Without insulin, we can't gain weight, but too much insulin, and you can't lose weight. You may be starting to figure out where this story is going. Chronically elevated blood sugar means chronically elevated insulin, and that is generally not good for health in many ways. 
It elevates oxidative stress and inflammation in the body. It also has a role to play in increasing blood pressure and the wrong kind of cholesterol. It causes hormone imbalances in men and women. And it also negatively impacts our liver's ability to detoxify the body. And all this adds up to accelerated aging. So how should we eat to balance our blood sugar, you ask? Number one, eat some protein at every meal. Protein has a much lower effect on blood sugar than carbohydrates, and it takes a bit longer to digest. So when you put a bit of protein in the stomach alongside your carbs, it slows down the absorption of glucose and helps to prevent blood sugar spikes. Number two, focus on slow carbs. These are carbs that are generally wrapped up in a lot of fiber. I'm talking about carbs such as whole grains, beans, and pulses. When you consume beans and grains in their whole form, unrefined, all that fiber means they take more time to digest, and that equates to a lower blood sugar response. And let's not forget vegetables. I'm not talking about root vegetables that are generally quite high in carbohydrates. I'm talking about colorful vegetables that grow above the ground, arguably the best source of carbohydrates and full of gut healthy fiber. Veggies are also the richest source of vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients, and they have a low impact on blood sugar. Number three, and this is kind of a no-brainer. Avoid processed and refined foods. The act of refining a food, such as a grain that is turned into flour, typically means that most of the fiber is removed. Foods made of flour are very quickly digested and converted into glucose, leading to spikes in our blood sugar. What's more, the refining process usually means the loss of many vital nutrients that are important for human health. Number four, and last but not least, Try to get into the habit of eating only three meals a day, four to six hours apart, and avoid snacking in between meals. You see, snacking generally increases our blood sugar and our insulin, and depending on what you snack on, it can guarantee you a seat on the blood sugar roller coaster. When our meals are balanced and include sufficient amounts of protein, carbs, and healthy fats, this tends to fill us up for longer and stabilize our blood sugar so that we don't get those cravings as frequently, and you may find that you completely forget about that after afternoon cookie. And also, eating in this way promotes what we call metabolic flexibility, which basically means that your body can manage its fuel sources more efficiently, running on blood glucose after meals and switching over to our fat reserves in between meals. So those are my top tips for maintaining balanced blood sugar levels. I hope you found them helpful. If you put these tips to the test, we'd love to hear how you get on. So hit us up in the comments below. Remember to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon so you never miss a future episode.